Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today, the men and women of the United States Space Force will observe a change of responsibility and welcome Chief Master Sergeant John F. Bentavania as the second Chief Master Sergeant of the Space Force and pay special tribute to the first Chief Master Sergeant of the Space Force, Roger A. Toberman, on the occasion of his retirement from active duty. The host for today's ceremony is the Chief of Space Operations, General B. Chance Saltzman. We are also honored to have, as a member of the official party, the Secretary of the Air Force, the Honorable Frank Kendall. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. In battles of old, the Color Guard led the charge, braving enemy fire to inspire their fellow warriors to victory. Escorting our nation's colors and the United States Space Force flag is the United States Space Force Honor Guard and the United States Air Force Honor Guard. Leading the troop formation is the newly formed 16-member Space Force Ceremonial Unit made up of various career fields that have served in military conflicts and humanitarian efforts throughout the world. Marching before you with pride is the United States Space Force and Air Force Honor Guards. A distinctive feature of military ceremonies is the formal presentation of command to the reviewing official. After the commander of troops presents the command, musical honors will be played in honor of the Secretary of the Air Force, the Honorable Frank Kendall.
Please remain standing for the advancement of the colors and the playing of our national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, Chaplain Captain Kevin Pugh will now deliver the invocation. For those who desire to join me in prayer. Father, we thank you for this glorious day that we've gathered here to celebrate the change of responsibility and the retirement ceremony. Father, we're thankful for the first Chief Master Sergeant of the Space Force, Chief Toberman. We're thankful for his years of sacrificing for his dedication to his country, his dedication to his family, his dedication to his airmen, and then ultimately his dedication to his guardians. God, being the first of anything is never easy. Being the first to lay the foundation, to pave the way, and to plow grounds that have never been plowed before. But we're thankful that Chief Toberman took up the cause. And not only did he take up the cause, but God, he exceeded expectations. And we're thankful for the, for the framework that he has laid. And God, now as he prepares to move on to higher heights and deeper depths in the next phase of life for he and his family, I pray your grace upon him. I pray that you will lead and guide him and direct him. I'm thankful for the sacrifices of his family, of, of how they supported him and, and stood with him and stood behind him. Now God, as he moves on to this next phase, I pray that you will continue to lead him, continue to order his steps, continue to make the way straight for him. And then God, as Chief Pennsylvania comes in, God, I pray that he will now take up the helm and continue to take our space force beyond the sky because the sky is not the limit. We're thankful that he is the right man for the job to take us now where we're headed to go. God, I pray that your grace will be upon him that on those long nights and those heavy days that he will still be able to come home and find refuge with his family. He can take off the hat, take off the uniform and just be himself and find his oasis in peace. God, I pray for his marriage, that you would strengthen them. That I pray for his, his family, that they will be that support system like he's never had before. Then I pray for his wisdom because God, at this next level, it's gonna take even greater wisdom to guide our space force where you're calling it to be. 
But again, God, we're thankful that he is the right man at the right time for this right job. We thank you and we glorify you. This we pray in your holy name. Amen. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the Secretary of the Air Force, the Honorable Frank Kendall. Good morning. And a beautiful morning it is. Well done, Chaplain. Should have had this outside, I think. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you uh, today for this incredible event. We are so grateful for Chief Toberman's decades of dedicated service, and we're pleased to welcome Chief Petrovina to our leadership team. I'd like to welcome Toby's wife, Rachel, his sons, Henry and Gabe, his mother, Holly, Aunt Terry, and cousin Mitchell. Please join me. I'd also like to welcome Chief Pennsylvania, his wife, Kathy, his daughter, Caitlin, and his sisters, uh, Mary and Don. <laughs> when I first thought about what I could say today about Toby and his incredible contributions to the Air Force and Space Force, what came to mind immediately, and what I recognized the first moment I talked to him, is he is an incredibly energetic, passionate, and empathetic leader. He's also an impressive singer, uh, a, a trait that I do not share. But I'm not sure if we'll get to hear that today, but I wish we could. When I looked over Toby's early performance reports, it was, it was fascinating how many times they mentioned him singing the national anthem at various events, and that he was the winner of the Tops in Blue talent competition in Hawaii. You got me beat on that one by a lot, Toby. Uh, that, however, is just the beginning of Toby's talents. He started his Air Force career as an honor graduate in basic training and the cryptologic linguist course, learning Chinese as his first assignment. Toby continued to excel throughout his career. He quickly became a trusted linguist, intel analyst, and a leader, both formally and informally. It's clear from Toby's records that he was not only excelling individually, but always pulling people up with him, a trait that I have seen repeatedly for the last two years supporting, teaching, and mentoring those around him, including me for the last two years. Toby also always found ways to serve outside his formal duties, whether it was coaching football teams or working with local organizations. Toby excelled so much, in fact, that the Air Force decided to have him learn one more language and expected him to maintain proficiency in both Chinese and Albanian. He then spent much of his non-commissioned officer career in the Rivet Joint RC-135 electronic warfare platform, flying more than 4,500 hours supporting several deployments and combat operations. He was a distinguished graduate of just about everything, Airman Leadership School, the NCO Academy, and the Senior NCO Academy. He was selected to fill various leadership positions at all levels of the Air Force, from the squadron to major commands and combatant commands. In April of 2020, he became the first enlisted member, the first enlisted member period, and the first chief master sergeant of the new Space Force. We never found the job that he couldn't do well, so we gave him one that no one had ever done before. Unsurprisingly, his performance was phenomenal in this role as he had been in all others. Toby defined what it means to be an enlisted guardian and he became the model for all enlisted guardians to follow today and for the future. We could not have chosen better. He shaped the character, values, and culture of the Space Force and guided General Raymond as they built the Space Force from the time uh, they were the only two members of the Space Force. Toby has now helped guide the second chief of space operations, General Saltzman, and a new secretary of the Air Force as we work together to build the foundation, build on the foundation that he and General Raymond started. His contributions have been literally unprecedented and without parallel. Chief Pentavania, you have some big shoes to fill, but don't worry, we won't ask you to translate Chinese or Albanian, or to sing, for that matter. Chief Pentavania brings his own impressive background and talents, and we're incredibly excited to have him as our second Chief Master Sergeant of the Space Force. 
He has incredible experience in both maintenance and space operations and has served in top leadership positions both in Space Operations Command and here in the Pentagon. Chief Pennsylvania has the experience needed to continue the amazing progress that the Space Force has made in just a few short years it's been in existence. Congratulations to both Chief Pennsylvania and Chief Toberman. Thank you for all your incredible contributions to our nation. You represent everything good about Semper Supra. You are the embodiment of that. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Chief of Space Operations, General B. Chance Saltzman. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, as Secretary Kendall said, this is a terrific day, uh, both in weather terms and for the Space Force in general. Uh, Secretary Kendall, thank you for taking time to be here today, and thank you for your continued support, not just to T Chief Toberman, Chief Bentavania, but to guardians all over the world. Distinguished guests, friends, family, fellow soldiers, sailors, Marines, airmen, and guardians, thank you for being here today to help celebrate this momentous occasion for both Toby and B9. Rachel, Kath, it's great for you to be here as well. This day is as much about you as it is about your husbands. Thank you both for your dedication and support over these many years. Ladies and gentlemen, Today is an historic day, not just for Toberman and Bentavania families, but for the Space Force. In our short history, as Secretary Kendall said, the service has had only one Chief Master Sergeant of the Space Force. And in a few moments, we will bear witness to the mantle being passed of leadership transferring, and we will have our second. All the responsibility and accountability will pass from Chief Toberman to Chief Bentavania. The position of Chief Master Sergeant of the Space Force, and any service for that matter, is a critically important one. For the Space Force, they are a personal advisor to myself as the Chief of Space Operations and to the Secretary of the Air Force on all issues regarding the welfare, readiness, morale, proper utilization and development of the Guardians, those that have answered the call to serve our nation. It's a huge responsibility. You feeling the weight there? I hope. It's a huge responsibility because it's not just a responsibility to the senior leadership in the department, but rather it's a responsibility to all the guardians and their families located around the world. Now one of you fine chiefs know precisely what this means, and the other is about to take on this immense responsibility. Let me start with the first of those. Toby, you've done a phenomenal job over the last three plus years. For those of us that have seen this endeavor play out from the beginning, this little startup we call the Space Force, we know that the senior positions are extremely demanding under normal conditions. But when you layer onto those demands, the demands of establishing a new service, a new military service from scratch, the effort required truly becomes mind-boggling. But those daunting prospects didn't phase you at all. You and your team set about to tackle the toughest challenges never putting aside the hard work that comes with building new structures, new processes, never shrinking from the challenge to get it right when there was so much pressure just to get it done. All the while understanding that how we did the work was just as important as the work itself because how you do it affects the newly forming culture of the Space Force. You tackled this by addressing the fundamentals. The first step was to develop a new set of core values that shape our behavior foster positive cultures, and play a significant role in the personal and professional growth of our guardians. After months of work, countless hours talking to senior leaders and guardians, you and your team developed the four core values, distinct and unique to the idea of an innovative and agile service, just perfect for the Space Force. Character, connection, courage, and commitment. These are not just words on paper, but guiding principles that shape every Guardian's career. And it's because of you and your team's efforts that we have captured that essence so well. Under your leadership, your team also focused on solidifying the service's force structure. In less than three years, you took the old Air Force Space Command and broke it into three separate and distinct field commands, 
One focused on operations, one on training, one on acquisition. And then you compressed our chain of command to make it more responsive. You also oversaw the stand-up of three new service components to provide combatant commanders, organic space planning, employment expertise, and space command and control that is focused on the Joint Forces operational warfighting priorities and requirements. You also laid the foundation for the Space Force's workforce and talent management by creating the separate career fields for officers, enlisted, and civilians. This new approach enabled the ease of transfer and integration of 7,500 guardians, a quarter of whom never wore an Air Force uniform. All of these efforts allowed the Space Force to be more lean, agile, and flexible during initial service stand-up without sacrificing critical support to the warfighters deployed overseas. This is just a small list of the phenomenal things Toby has done over the past three plus years. Toby, your critical thinking, passion for taking care of people, and absolute dedication to making the Space Force better has propelled the Space Force forward, setting an extraordinary precedent for all of us to follow. I know that throughout this journey, your wife Rachel has stood by you, and she deserves enormous credit, maybe all the credit, for providing you with the love and support you needed to faithfully lead and serve in the Space Force. Rachel, I know that you've been a vital sounding board. You've been a source of motivation and strength and made it possible for Toby to remain committed to the tough work he was performing. Your efforts have made your husband, our Space Force, and our nation stronger. And all along the way, you've been professional in your own right. Kept the whole family stitched together. Toby, Henry, Gabe. Heard a great story last night. You guys don't mind if I tell a little story, do you? So, so Gabe and, and Toby were going back and forth. What are you doing? I'm looking at my service dress, and I'm trying to figure out where to put the retirement pin. So immediately, Gabe texts back a picture of Toby in this fabulous uniform, and he says, Dad, don't you think you got enough pins on that thing? Perfect. To all of you, on behalf of the entire Space Force family, thank you. Thank you, Rachel. <clears throat> as you transition into retirement, I want you to know that your efforts as First Chief Master Sergeant of the Space Force made a real difference in where we are today. And you can be proud of the Space Force culture and framework you helped design and implement. It's just been a tremendous honor to serve with you, Chief. Now, as we close the chapter on one period in our service's history, we eagerly await the start of another. Today, we inaugurate a new chapter in the Space Force as we assign the responsibility that comes with being Chief Master Sergeant of the Space Force to Chief John B-9 Bentavania. He may not know exactly what he's in for, but I can assure you all he is more than up to it. In his most recent assignment, B-9 was the Senior Enlisted Advisor to the Chief Operations Officer here in Washington, D.C. He was responsible for shaping career field policy and guidance to ensure the service was responsive to both current and future needs. This makes him a perfect choice to be our next Chief Master Sergeant of the Space Force. B-9, as, as Secretary Kendall pointed out, has a proven track record of accomplishments and steadfast dedication to developing Guardians. He embodies the qualities and values needed to be my partner leading the Space Force into the future. He has proven to be successful as a maintainer, a space operator, command chief, senior enlisted leader, and a mentor, and simply put, as a leader. He is perfectly suited and fully prepared to pick up where Chief Toverman is leaving off and continuing to advance Space Force towards its goals. We welcome him, his wife Kath, their daughter Caitlin, also sisters Mary and Donna, and the extended family who flew in to celebrate. B9, I know you know this, but the challenges before us are immense. But so too are the opportunities. Our adversaries are looking for ways to gain advantage over us in every domain. Our ability to adapt, to stay ahead of adversaries, to seize new frontiers will be instrumental in maintaining our superiority in space, and that begins with our guardians. I know you know that. Therefore, my charge to you is to build upon the progress that Toby and team have made and then forge your own path. Find new and innovative ways to build combat-ready forces and amplify the Guardian spirit. I need you to bring your unique and experienced perspective 
to the problems we are facing, challenge our assumptions, ensure important issues are elevated from multiple angles, listen to the experts around you, collect feedback from the field at all levels, and get that critical feedback to me and to those on the headquarters staff. I have every confidence you will do just that, carrying out your duties with character, connection, commitment, and the courage you have demonstrated every day throughout your career. I'm really looking forward to continuing the relationship that we started years ago and working with you to ready our Space Force for the great power challenges we will be facing. To the Toberman and Pennsylvania families, thank you again for your dedication to taking care of Guardians and continuing to serve the Space Force and our nation. Thank you, Semper Supra. On April 3rd, 2020, Chief Master Sergeant Roger A. Toberman was selected to serve as the first Chief Master Sergeant of the Space Force. The Chief Master Sergeant of the Space Force represents, serves, and advises on behalf of all Guardians. They advocate for their interests to the American public and to all levels of government to ensure their ability to serve remains exemplary. The exchange of the rank on the service code and device on the service cap symbolizes the weight and consequence of the office of Chief Master Sergeant of the Space Force. With this exchange today, September 15, 2023, Chief Bentavania assumes the responsibilities of the highest non-commissioned officer position in the United States Space Force. Ladies and gentlemen, in an honored tradition, Chief Master Sergeant John Bentavania's spouse, Mrs. Kathy Bentavania, their daughter, Miss Caitlin Bentavania, and his sisters, Miss Mary McGeary and Miss Donna Toma, will now assist Chief Master Sergeant Bentavania in donning his service coat with the rank of Chief Master Sergeant of the Space Force. On behalf of the men and women of the United States Space Force, these flowers are presented to Mrs. Bentavania as a warm welcome to the Space Force leadership team. General Saltzman and Specialist 3 Matthew Tarango will now replace the service cap device bearing the insignia of his new position as the Chief Master Sergeant of the Space Force. The Chief Master Sergeant of the Space Force's service cap insignia prominently features a delta atop a globe with an encircling orbit, which is a representation of the United States Space Force's unwavering commitment to safeguarding space for our nation. The emblem, enveloped by a distinctive hexagonal wreath, symbolizes the Guardians in the enlisted force, the Space Force's core values of character, connection, commitment, and courage, and timeless values of honor and service. As the Space Force was originally comprised from service members of the five armed forces branches, the six sides of the hexagon acknowledges the Space Force as the sixth branch. As the highest enlisted rank in the Space Force, 
the Chief Master Sergeant of the Space Force, remains an unwavering beacon and a resounding advocate for the enlisted force, ensuring Guardians' interests and voices are heard by leaders in our government and Americans across our great nation. This emblem serves as a representation of all enlisted Guardians who swore to serve their country. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise as General Saltzman will now present the positional colors to Chief Pennsylvania, appointing him as the Chief Master Sergeant of the Space Force. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the Chief Master Sergeant of the Space Force, John F. Bentevania. Secretary Kendall, thank you for the kind words for being here with us today. To all distinguished visitors, friends, and family with us today, in person and virtually, and Lyndon Donald, I'm thinking about you. Thank you for being here with us and sharing a moment with all of us. General Saltzman, thank you for presiding over today's ceremony and for your leadership and trust. I am inspired by your drive to make our guardians, the principal public servants, space-minded warfighters, and bold and collaborative problem solvers that our joint force, our allies, and our partners need. As the space domain continues to become more congested, contested, and competitive, it will be our combat-ready guardians that unleash their technical expertise, critical thinking, and creative problem solving to secure our nation's interests in, from, and to space. Kath and I look forward to teaming with you and Ms. Jennifer as we champion this noble endeavor. To my fellow senior enlisted advisors across the DOD, I look forward to partnering with you as we continue to serve our enlisted force and work with Congress and other senior leaders to advocate for our service members and their loved ones. And Joe, we are one team, one fight. Community leaders and partners who are here with us today and around the world, thank you for your supporting our guardians and their families. Part of military service is going where the mission needs you, and that means into your communities, sometimes far from home. It's where our children go to school. It's where our spouses seek opportunity. It's where we all look for a safe and accepting environment with our neighbors. It's these experiences that become memorable and meaningful to our military families and helps keep our all-volunteer force strong. I appreciate your support and look forward to our continued partnership. This is not a simple event to organize and execute. I'd like to acknowledge a team of teams from across the Pentagon and Andrews Air Force Base for the weeks of hard work and a special shout out to the Space Force and Air Force Honor Guard. 
Your efforts have made this day special for my family and my friends. Chief Master Sergeant of the Space Force, Toberman. We have been on a journey together. I remember when you, Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force Bass and I, first worked in the Pentagon all those years ago. And even then, we were striving to do everything we could to take care of our people. I remember we'd sit around the food court of the Pentagon in Opine, and that's where all the real work of the Pentagon gets done at the food court. And we'd think about, if only someday we had the opportunity to sit in that office. Well, look at us now, who would have thought? Simsif number one, our first enlisted guardian. Your passion helped establish a service built on trust and values, like the giant rockets that propel humans and technology into space during initial, initial launch stage, fighting to break the bonds of Earth. You have been a driving force consistently, consistently moving the Space Force towards our vision, our ideal. For generations, guardians will have the Space Force that finds its foundations in their character, connection, commitment, and courage. I hope when you are fly fishing somewhere in the 13,000 miles of streams in Wisconsin, or wherever the fish may lead you, that you think back. And when you do that, to the thousands of men and women, our nation's most competitive advantage. And that your legacy that you bestowed upon them, held within the service you helped establish. Kath and I are truly humbled for this opportunity to serve during this second stage. And from the bottom of our hearts, we thank you and Rachel and wish you the best of luck. <laughs> 29 years ago, if my recruiter in Montclair, New Jersey would have told me I'd be standing here today, no one, including myself, would have believed him. I'm a proud kid from Jersey City, New Jersey, Greenville section. I was not a great student in school, and who, according to my sister, is spoiled by my parents. But I think it's because I was my parents' favorite. <laughs> and not known among my friends of making really smart choices. Right, guys? Many thought I'd be separated from the Air Force within a few months. Guess on what most people consider a late bloomer in life. There were several reasons for this, but there are two st standouts in my mind. If you don't know my wife, Kathy, she's pretty much the reason why I have friends and pretty much why everyone I meet tells me I'm married up. <laughs> Kathy continually inspires me to be a loving husband, attentive father, and overall better human. Interestingly enough, she also wants me to work on my laundry skills, but I don't know what category that falls into. We were married before I enlisted, so she has been with me on this journey the entire time. And all during that time, she has built a successful career of her own, in her own right. Which means that Kathy has time and grade over everyone, so sorry, Jim Salzman. Kathy, thank you for being my teammate in this adventure that we call life. Another major positive influence that contributed to my late bloom it was military service, and it was a late bloom. As one of my very earliest supervisors can attest to, a very young Master Sergeant Mike Yakowinko referred to me, referred to a very young Airman Bentavania as a knucklehead quite often, yet in a loving way, but then proceeded to help me, improve, and encourage me. A cycle that extended throughout many supervisors across multiple assignments many of who are sitting in this audience today. I found meaning and purpose in the work I was doing in connection with the people around me. I was personally and professionally challenged. People pushed me to, do, to be the best version of myself, and though I did not always succeed, they did not lose faith. I may have enlisted in military service in 1994, but I did not join a profession of arms until years later. Becoming a principal public servant helped give me purpose and an initial four-year contract turned into a lifelong commitment. Though I believe this surprised several of my family and friends, I know it made my mother and father proud. So today, after 29 years of service, I stand here to say that Kath and I are still here for one reason, and that is you, the guardians of the Space Force and your family. 
and the importance that you hold to our nation. The space domain has evolved from a benign environment. The intentions of several state actors remain unclear. An unwanted threat of great power conflict is real. To successfully compete in this domain, we demand your willingness to learn and think outside the box, make uncomfortable decisions, and demonstrate a bias for action. We need you to be comfortable with the unknown and cultivate a service where change is not a distraction or a disadvantage. As Secretary, Secretary Kendall says, change is hard, losing is unacceptable. We will develop, train, and compensate you to employ your talents within an imagination, with an imagination to operate in the cyber, information and space domain you may never see, you may never touch, you may never feel but one that requires you to think critically and deliberately maneuver your way through any challenge. Together, we will set conditions to succeed against any competitor. This is why we are a separate service. This is why we present space forces to the joint force. We are guardians, and this is the way. Semper Supra. As we welcome the Chief Master Sergeant of the Space Force Pennsylvania today, we now honor Chief Master Sergeant of the Space Force Toberman as he retires from the United States Space Force. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise as General Saltzman presents the Distinguished Service Medal to Chief Master Sergeant of the Space Force Toberman. Attention to orders. The President of the United States of America, authorized by Act of Congress July 9, 1918, awards the Distinguished Service Medal to Chief Master Sergeant of the Space Force Roger A. Toberman for exceptionally meritorious service and a duty of great responsibility. Chief Toberman distinguished himself as the first Chief Master Sergeant of the Space Force from April 2020 to September 2023. During this period, Chief Toberman's dynamic leadership and strategic initiative were pivotal in establishing the United States' newest military branch in over 70 years to meet the National Defense Strategy's space objectives. As a visionary leader, he guided the creation of the Guardian Ideal, the service's foundational human capital strategy which shaped the approach for recruiting and developing bold, well-trained, and fully empowered individuals and is the guiding document for over 16,000 Guardians. Chief Toberman's unrivaled commitment towards establishing a positive culture drove the creation of the Space Force core values and their operationalization through the Guardian Spirit Handbook uniting inner service transfers, direct accessions, and all guardians alike towards a common identity of principled public servants, bold and collaborative problem solvers, and space-minded warfighters. Under his guidance, the service unveiled a striking new uniform, a distinctive enlisted rank structure, and was vital in instituting the initial honor guard cadre, serving as a source of pride and a visible representation of America's space force to the world. Chief Toberman revolutionized enlisted development and assignment processes, establishing talent management and accessions boards, equipping the service with the right personnel to enhance global security by increasing the lethality of our joint and coalition forces critical to integrated deterrence. The singularly distinctive accomplishments of Chief Toberman culminate a long and distinguished career in the service of his country and reflect the highest credit upon himself the United States Space Force, and the Department of the Air Force.
Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing as General Saltzman retires Chief Master Sergeant of the Space Force, Roger A. Toberman. Attention to orders. Department of the Air Force, Washington, District of Columbia, Special Order Number AC-008389, dated 17 July 2023, by order of the Secretary of the Air Force, Chief Master Sergeant of the Space Force Roger A. Toberman is retired from active duty, effective 1 April 2024, after 33 years of faithful and honorable duty. Please be seated. Chief Master Sergeant of the Space Force Toberman, we are pleased to present you with the following certificate from our Commander-in-Chief. It reads, I extend my personal gratitude and the sincere appreciation of a grateful nation to you for your patriotic service to our country. Your bravery and dedication in our armed forces helped protect your fellow Americans during a critical moment in our history and contributed to a world of greater security and growing prosperity. Your devotion to duty, honor, and country in keeping with the long traditions of the finest military in the world embodied the American ideal of selfless service. Our nation owes you an incredible debt. Your commitment and the example you set will inspire future generations to serve with pride and to keep our country secure. You represent the best of our nation, and I join our fellow Americans in saluting your honorable service. I wish you happiness and success in your next chapter. Signed, Joseph R. Biden, Jr., Commander-in-Chief. General Saltzman will now present Chief Master Sergeant of the Space Force Toberman spouse, Miss Rachel Rush, and his sons, Mr. Gabriel Toberman and Mr. Henry Toberman, with the Space Force Retirement Pin to pin on Chief Master Sergeant of the Space Force Toberman. We would like to express our most sincere gratitude to Mr. Gabriel Toberman and Mr. Henry Toberman for their many years of support to their father and the Department of the Air Force. Last night, they both received certificates of appreciation from the Chief of Space Operations, General B. Chance Saltzman. Please stand as General Saltzman presents the Distinguished Public Service Award to Miss Rush. Attention to orders. The Department of the Air Force takes pleasure in presenting the Distinguished Public Service Award to Miss Rachel Rush in recognition for distinguished public service as the spouse of the first Chief Master Sergeant of the Space Force, United States Space Force, from April 2020 to September 2023. Ms. Rush worked in unison with the first and second Chief of Space Operations spouses advocating the importance of seeking and utilizing mental health services across the Department of the Air Force. Her patriotism, leadership, and advocacy aided the mental health and wellness of over 33,000 guardians, airmen, and families. 
Furthermore, Ms. Rush authored an inspirational article in Military Spouses magazine to millions of readers globally. The selfless service and advocacy for the well-being of guardians and families serves as an example of the profound impact she has on our nation's defense. The distinctive accomplishments of Ms. Rachel Rush reflect great credit upon herself and the Department of the Air Force. Please be seated. General Saltzman will now present Ms. Rush with a Certificate of Appreciation from the Department of the Air Force. It reads, Ms. Rush, your commitment to the Space Force, your family, our guardians and their families, and your spouse's profession during his career has been a model for others to follow. For this, we are forever grateful. With our deep appreciation, admiration, and respect, we present this certificate as a remembrance of your years as a member of the Air and Space Force family. <laughs> On behalf of the men and women of the United States Space Force, these flowers are presented as a thank you to Ms. Rush for her support and dedication. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the posting of the colors. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Chief Master Sergeant of the Space Force Toberman, United States Space Force Retired.
The world will never prepare you for the task of changing it. And, and nothing could have prepared me for the last couple days. So I'm, I'm going to go a little off script right away as well. Because in, and if you were there last night and you experienced the, this pure, undiluted Space Force experience, and it was, it was awesome. But uh, in all of the emotion of everything, I actually forgot to say thanks to Rachel last night. And I thank all the many teammates that sent me many text messages <laughs> reminding me. So, so before I get confused again, I just, I just really need to say, um, most importantly, thanks, Rich. We, we, we had a, a big fight. Well, we, we have big fights in the house. And, um, and I, I think so telling of who my wife is, I said, hey, I, I forgot to thank you last night. And she had noticed. But, but she hadn't noticed in that way. What she said to me was, I thought maybe I'd let you down in my comments. You could never let me down. Not ever. All you do is lift me up. And it's not just that I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be anywhere without you. So thank you. And I'm sorry I had to wait till today. I love you, Rach. Thanks for everything. All right, Woo. get that out of the way. I would have thought after last night the tear tank would be empty, but apparently, apparently I got like a big 25 gallon tank. But uh, as uh, Chief Benjamin said, that you know this is the first time we've done anything like this, so it's not like they broke out the blueprint. And so again, before before I forget and before we get too into it, you know the planning team for this did an incredible amount of work. And it was the normal, you know, the usual suspects, the protocol team and the, the planning team and the honor guard, and the band, all the people that normally do this. But it was also the, the most amazing team ever assembled. Our first team in the office, the office of the Chief Master of the Space Force, they did such an amazing work for me and it's so good to see all of them there, and some of the old faces coming back, and Nettie wearing Space Force name tags for the first time. I, I get to see you, and uh, and the boss's team as well, and the, the office of the, the CSO has been so kind and inclusive and fantastic to me. So I, I just really, what an amazing ceremony, what amazing opportunity. One of the big, crazy insists that I had was. I don't want a hangar full of stuff. I want to see a backdrop of, of people, of our guardians. And so I appreciate whoever the artist was that, that made all that happen back there. It matters. People are what matters. So just thanks for such an awesome, awesome event. Okay, now. Mr. Secretary, sir, thanks for everything you've done. Thanks for your faith and trust in me. Thanks for the maneuver space that you give me because, you know, Chief Ben Devania said it in a kind of a kind way. He talked about the first stage, but if you've ever been at a launch, the first stage is really loud and really violent and a lot of stuff goes flying. And I think that's maybe what was in his head when he's like, oh, I know, I know who Toby is. And so, 
Thanks, sir, for always letting me be me. I appreciate it. And the same for you, General Saltzman. It's just been such a such an honor um, having you in the building in your last job and the fantastic conversations we had and then just to watch you lead us in a way that, that only you could do. I, it's just, it's been phenomenal and I, I really, truly appreciate it. John Bentavania, dude, it's been a ride and I couldn't imagine handing over this very important project I've been working on um, to anybody else. There's nobody that, that will care more and do more than, than you will. And I'm just, I'm so happy in your selection. And I'm, I'm happy to know you. And I'm, I'm just, I'm really, truly, there's the one thing of all the stressful things that have been going on, um, giving you the, the reins, isn't, it just isn't on the list. It's nowhere close, brother. I appreciate you. To the senior leaders, that are here in particular, Mr. Federigo, I apologize. I've been, been pretty busy, and so I, I wasn't able to quite get it across the line, but as I was going through all the many, many things that have been piling up in my office, I found my enlistment papers. And I don't know if you remember this, but, but, but I asked you to, to hand sign them because I thought maybe somebody might want them one day. Well, hopefully you want them because as soon as they come back from the framer, um, that piece of paper is, is yours. Because I appreciate you. Thanks for everything you've done. Yeah, I think you should clap them. <laughs> to the rest of the folks in the front row, thanks for being here in particular. The former, now former Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps, Troy Black, and the soon-to-be Senior Enlisted Advisor to the Chairman Troy, thanks for being here. Thanks for your friendship. Thanks for your love. Thanks for being a great teammate. And, and thanks in advance for what you're going to bring to that position. I, I couldn't be happier with the way it's going to go, and I appreciate you. Thank, thanks really for being here. It really matters. Thanks. And Joe Ambass, man, what a trip we've been on. And it's been amazing, both what we can talk about and, and what we can. But you, you are in every way a sister to me, and I love you with all my heart. It's just been quite a journey, and I can't wait to, to be sitting more or less where you're sitting watching you do this in not too long. Thanks. Okay, so I thank Rachel and went off script, but just real quick, Sanchi, please give Paul a hug for me when you get back home, but you two raised a hell of a daughter. And I appreciate it. And uh, Jennifer and, and Molly and Shireen, I know Mary's not here, but, uh, and now Kathy, I mean, to watch you ladies embrace us and embrace Rachel, I, I just couldn't be more thankful for the way you, you have welcomed us into your families and, and into your hearts. Just thanks so much. And it's been, uh, it's been quite a ride, but I, I know she really appreciates it. So since I have the microphone and she doesn't, thanks. And uh, and when you when you see the see the old boss next, Molly, give him a hug for me. And same same with General General Raymond changed my life, and I'll always own for that. So I know he couldn't be here today, but I thank him. And I know General Brown the same way. But give give him a hug for me. And the same with the, I know Secretary Barrett couldn't be here either, but. She's such a kind human being, and she taught me so much. And we've been really lucky in the, in the three secretaries that have been in the seat since, since I've been, been in this orbit. Um, they all cared so much about the human beings that were put in their care. And so a shout out to those wonderful ladies as well. Yeah.
And then maybe the last DVs that I want to talk about, I don't know how many of you can see, but down here in the second row, uh, we've got some of our youngest guardians. We gave them the, the frontest row seat we could get because we wanted you to be here. And I, I tell you, nothing would make me happier than if, if one day one of you lieutenants and one of you specialists that you were on this stage in 20, 25 years, and it would, especially if I could still be seeing it, right? That'd be good. I want to live. For the record, I want to live a long time. So, um, thanks. Thanks, you guys, for being here. Appreciate you. And then, and then to my family, mom. Thanks for being here. Thanks for everything you did. And Terry and Mitch, it's good to see you. And I'm, I'm glad that you're here. It matters. And then I'll, I'll tell just one quick story. The, the boys were sharing an apartment in Vienna or someplace back in the day. And I mean, they were, Gabriel was certainly still a teenager. They might have both been. I, I don't know where they were. I don't know. I actually don't know how they afforded anything in Vienna. But they're in this dive apartment. And and they were by themselves in there. And um, the population of uh, ramen noodle wrappers and, and Chef Boyardee cans out was was high. They, they asked me to come visit, so I came to visit. And, and the only piece of decoration in the entire apartment was this horrible, horrible painting of a of an elephant. It was horrible. It had this giant, gauche, ridiculous, it had sequins stitched into it. It was ridiculous. It's just this big elephant. And uh, we walk in and, and Henry, he gestures over his shoulder and he says, oh, obviously we don't talk about this. You got to think about that for a second. And, and I'll tell you, it was... It was that moment, I remember that moment, and I thought, these two young men are, are funny, and they're intelligent, and they got good hearts. I guess if they want to live in a slovenly slum for the rest of their lives, it'll be okay. <laughs> Job done. But they didn't moved from the apartment to living in a bus for a while. I mean, they've had quite a life. But I'm, I'm proud of the men that you are. I, I really couldn't be prouder. So thanks. Thanks for being here. Okay. <laughs> Finally, to the Guardians. Let's, let's reset, take two, because I do, before I move on to the Guardians, I, I want to thank, I want to thank our United States Air Force for taking a chance on me and investing in me for 30 years to prepare me for this. I obviously traded jerseys and moved up, but I, <laughs> it's the best minor league team I ever was a part of. <laughs> AAA. All right, so now our guardians. Remember this, the future, your future is a book that you write, not a book that you read. We we have a beautiful document called the Guardian Commitment. And no matter what you do for a living, no matter what team you play for, if you haven't read this one-page document, please go Google it and read it because it's fantastic. And it reminds our Guardians that at all times they're playing one of two roles. They're a team leader or they're a team member. And so because this might be the last time you ever give me a mic, 
I'm going to preach at you just for a little bit. And to the team leaders, I remind you of the story of Meriwether Lewis, who on the 18th of August in 1805 was one of the most accomplished human beings in history. On his 31st birthday, he stood on the Continental Divide as the first American of European descent to ever look west from the east. He had done everything. And if you've never read his journal entry from that day, go find it and read it. Because at this moment of greatness, he's just talking about how much of his life he's wasted. How many opportunities he let slide and he makes a promise to himself. And in a way, to the rest of the world, because it's a journal entry, to double down on what he called the two primary objectives of human existence. One, to further the happiness of the human race, and two, to the advance the information of the succeeding generation. That's all you need to know. It's all you ever need to do as a leader. It's take care of them and make them better. It really is that simple. For you team members, I'd ask you to remind you what I've told you many times, the story of Michelangelo and the angel in the stone that the greatest sculptor in history didn't think he was creating art, he thought he was uncovering art. And remember what I already told you about the world. You've learned a lot. The world has made you who you are. But the world will never prepare you for the task of changing it. Change comes from somewhere else. Change, come, change comes from who you are. You already know who that is. You don't need us to tell you. You don't need us to build you. You need to be you. You need to remember why you raised your hand. You need to remember what you are moving towards. Because that's the space force that we're supposed to have. And if you let what we did yesterday keep that from you, that's on you. Move towards the meaning that you already know exists. If you have the courage to believe in impossible things, if you can find the commitment to master yourself and your domain, if you have the connection to ask for and provide help to your teammates. And if you have the character to do it after your own fashion, being who you really are, then we, we will change the world. We can change the world if you just be who you're supposed to be. The future of our Space Force, of your Space Force, it's a book that you will write. And I can't wait to read it. I love every one of you. Thanks. Semper Supra.
Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, in recognition of his 33 years of service, the United States Air Force Band's Ceremonial Brass will now play a special musical selection in honor of Chief Master Sergeant of the Space Force Toberman. Ladies and gentlemen, 
the United States Space Force Honor Guard and United States Air Force Honor Guard will now pass in review in honor of Chief Master Sergeant of the Space Force Pennsylvania. It is customary for the senior official to receive the pass in review. However, today, Secretary Kendall has deferred this honor to the Chief Master Sergeant of the Space Force. As a reminder, everyone should stand as the colors pass before them and military members in uniform should salute. Ladies and gentlemen, the men and women of the United States Space Force are proud to have served with Chief Master Sergeant of the Space Force Toberman and wish him and Miss Rush every success in their future endeavors. The United States Space Force also extends a warm welcome to Chief Master Sergeant of the Space Force and Mrs. Bentavania. Please note that the words to Semper Supra are located on the last page of the ceremony program. Please remain standing for the playing of the Space Force song, Semper Supra, and the departure of the official party. <laughs> <laughs> 